Hello, Gripaholics. Are you ready for Valentine's Day? Don't forget to get your sweetheart a gift for this coming Friday. Go to dieselcrew.com slash catalog.htm to get him or her something extra special. This is episode 123 of This Week in Grip. This is the king of pinch, Napalm Jed Johnson, and I'm joined by the esteemed Alan Hynek Esquire and James Professor Crowbar Retoritas. Subscribe to this channel right now. Hit the thumbs up and leave a comment or two during the show related to our discussion topics. The main topic for today is anvil lifting. This has been kind of a hot topic this year already, considering it was featured on Devin Laird's YouTube channel recently and got a lot of exposure. In addition to this, Rogue Fitness has announced a new Record Breakers event for the last day of the Arnold on their new Anvil training device. Alan, have you seen that new device that was developed by Rogue, their, an- their Anvil they're selling? I caught a glimpse recently as uh, Brian Shaw actually did a lift on the Rogue uh-huh. Anvil. Look, looks yes. like he hit about 240 pounds. I actually have a Rogue site up right now. Okay. Um, it looks like they offer the Anvil... And kind of, uh, you know, two different finishes. They have kind of the conventional silver one that looks quite a lot like uh, Iron Mine's anvil, really, mm-hmm. except it has a, a slightly bigger base on it. But then they also have a black uh, a zinc finished one, mm. that uh, kind of that black oxide. It actually looks really sharp. Um, but uh, it's it's neat, really similar in appearance, at least at first glance, to what uh, to what Iron Mine was doing. Yeah, it's similar, um, but it's a lot taller. It's 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 about twice as long. As the yeah. as the iron mind, it so, looks like eleven inches. It says. Yeah, it looks it, similar it to cool. the Sornex Mandrel, only it doesn't have the egg shape egg shape that the Mandrel has. It's it's more you know conical or whatever you know cone shaped, like more of a perfect cone. So, right, right. It's a really nice piece. Um, but I thought you know I thought it had kind of a lot of a lot of similarities to what was already out there. But I'm interested to see what uh, some. I don't know, some of our better anvil lifters can do when they get a hold of it. Something tells me, you know, I, I see Brian Shaw pull that 240, but I don't know. i gotta, I got to think guys like Luke could, could hit more than that without much trouble. But well, that's, that's possibly yeah. to be seen. Um, I, I, you know, I, Luke has already submitted a video for, uh, for, for consideration for their record breakers. It is a $1,000 prize. For the for the first place Hi. winner, as far as I can tell, which is an excellent an excellent prize uh, for for a grip type of lift. So, but yeah, I think um, I think I think especially with a little bit more training here until the Arnold, I think Luke could easily overtake that number, as well as Brian. Probably Brian could too. I mean, it's his first time trying it. Um, he seemed pretty happy with a 240 in the video. Um, oh, well. Yeah. So we'll have to see. You know, the other thing I was going to ask, uh, you know, so Luke submitted, is that what you have to do? You have to submit a video to Rogue? Yeah, there's, and there's all, I, I haven't, I don't have all the specifics. I didn't even look into it because I know that there's no way I'm, I'm even going to be close to any of the leaders that are going to submit videos. So um, I didn't even really look into it. But you got to pull it like a, like a minimum height. Or, or you can't pull, you know, you, they, they put a lot of requirements down there, James. If you look at it, it's it's pretty specific okay. what you have to demonstrate. Um, <clears throat> and I think the minimal the minimum number for men is like 162.5 pounds, which I think a lot of people will be able to hit that because it didn't feel yeah. like too much. It didn't feel too much more difficult than the iron mind and i know a lot of people get 162.5 pounds they also said that you could submit a lift using either the rogue anvil handle the iron mind anvil handle or just an actual anvil where it was it was weighed um shown to shown to weigh at least uh that 162.5 pounds so they're looking to get people in it then yeah They're they're yeah. giving people more than enough uh, opportunity to get into it. Yeah. So well, good for them. That's that's the so, way to uh, do it, especially if you want to attract sure. attention. 
Yeah, I think it's great. I think it's yeah. I think it's fantastic, man. And um, you know, that might be one of those things where like the the vertical bar slash uh anvil uh type of lifts are like a person's bread and butter. You might be able to see someone go up there and compete with some of the best grip guys in the world that you might not have heard heard of before because maybe they're not as good at pinch and grippers, but they can really pull off a big number on an anvil style handle. So it's it's really yeah. a great opportunity in many ways. You know, I was thinking um I was thinking of like uh Gill and Thomas Larson too. See mm-hmm. if uh, I didn't, was Thomas coming out for the arm lifting thing? Uh, I don't think so or? this year. I don't think so. No? Okay. Because that's he's another guy that I'd love to see in that, and you know, knowing like I mean, I, on the first Southern Squeeze that I went to, um, I guess it was what like 20, 2016. I remember Gill not even warming up with like three oh something on the on the V bar, just walked over to it and lifted it up. And I know Gill's got good anvil numbers too, so mm. Gill's another guy that I I'd like to see in that. Yeah, so, no, Gill's going to be there. Yeah. He's he's going he's signed up for the competition, so. You know, it's a possibility that he could submit for this and stick around an extra day or two and take a stab at this competition. So that's that's a definite possibility. Yeah, yeah it does. That's cool. Yeah, yeah so we're going to be... be the uh, going away favorite. What's that? I said Luke would probably be the going away favorite. Yeah, he's he's definitely up there. There's there's no doubt. I I don't know anybody that's as good at, as good at all the vertical style handles as he is i mean he's he's good at all of them so he, he's right up yeah. there on the world record with like every single implement of that nature so <clears throat> yeah i hope he gets picked that is true um hey, go ahead alan was anybody was anybody else envious of brian shaw's scale oh it was how really did that nice. not get talked about did you see that thing it had that that sure. tread marked on it and stuff that that's a heavy duty scale that's the kind of thing that people need to be using yeah. That was some serious piece of hardware. Yeah, I couldn't. That's that caught my attention before the anvil did. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I didn't doubt nice. that. I didn't doubt that reading at all. <laughs> I figured that scale was pretty accurate. Yep, yep. He's got some nice gear. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> all right, so we're gonna be talking yeah, more I, about anvils. Was, did you have something, James? No, no, I didn't see the scale. I do, I think I do think it's funny that like Alan went right to the scale. Here he is, he's like pulling his big number now. It's like, wow, look at that scale. Yeah, dude. Look at that dude. <laughs> Slap the hood on that baby and kick the tire, take it for a ride, Alan. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice scale. For sure. <laughs> so we're going to talk more about anvils in a little bit, but there was, got, I mean, you can't even do it justice with this description, but there was an absolutely incredible feat of grip strength that took place this last week. Uh, and we wanted to highlight it in particular today because not only could this thing be feat of the year, but it might be one day considered one of the greatest feats of grip strength that's ever done. And uh, it's a shame that it comes from someone um, who has no guts to compete in grip sport, especially not against me. But, James, um, tell, tell everybody what exactly went down. Well... <laughs> No guts for Storm. <laughs> anyway, uh, Storm Chilino, who uh, is an arm wrestler and a great one, uh, one of the best middle to light heavyweight arm wrestlers in the world, bar none, um, mm. definitely top five in my book, uh, was able to go underneath two Thomas Inch dumbbells, thumbless, and farmers walk them for, 40, for 20 feet. And that is, uh, I mean, anyone that's ever done any kind of thumbless lifting would be able to know that that is a feat that is just, uh, I, I mean, yeah, you're right. Incredible doesn't do it justice. I don't even, I don't it's, know what the word is. I, I know it. Well, go ahead. It, it's just so exclusive, man. I When he, when he yeah. did the double thumbless inch deadlift last year, I started a video project where I was going to highlight just how exclusive this feat is. So I never ended up finishing that. But if you think about it this way, think of all the people who have ever lifted an inch dumbbell, you dramatically decrease the numbers 
when you ask them to lift two at the same time. You'll decrease it even more, even more. Like, like by multitudes, you'll decrease it. If you ask them to go with a cup style grip where the where the thumb is on the same side of the, as the fingers. Now you're now you're into like maybe a total of 10 people who have ever done that. And then with storm bell. with one bell. Yes, with just one bell. And then storm has done it with two bells and then picked them up and carried them now. So it's it's just uh you're it, it's it's like a no set of a number four, a double no set of a number four grower. Yeah. That's that's really what you're talking about as far as like the the numbers are concerned. You know, if you're comparing apples to oranges, yeah, man, it's it's really insane. Yeah, you know, it's funny because I was I was talking to the guys about it today at training, and I said, you know, I mean, it's Jason Jason Otto agreed too. He says might be the greatest feet of grip strength we've ever seen definitely to me the front runner for the feet of the year and the only way i see that being broken as the feet of the year this year is if he walks them further Mm -hmm. because that to me like it really it really blew my mind i probably watched it about i don't know 15 20 times in a row and you know i mean one of the things i would say even as somebody that's done farmer's walk with thick-handled belt, thick belts, grabbing them from a suitcase style, you know, is harder. You feel like you have to go lower to the ground, you know, because yeah. you're not bending down right in front of it. I mean, you don't actually have to, but you kind yeah. of do, you know. It's like because both of your shoulders are going down and you have to kind of squat down to get them. I mean, it's just a – it is such a ridiculous feat of strength. So just wow, you know. I mean, I was, I was, I was speechless. I, I watched it so many times. I was more impressed by his flexibility, being able to bend down that low and pick that stuff up, because I'm not sure that I could do something like that. I usually get stalled like halfway if I was going to do something. <laughs> he was able to squat right down. Well, that was pretty awesome. <laughs> How old well, a man is Storm, is, anyway? Like you... Dude, Storm's uh, only like well, mid-20s. Well, okay. <laughs> no, he's not, I, think he's, I think he's a little bit older than that. And the reason why I say that is because – I met Storm, I want to say it was, I went back up to Connecticut in 2006 for uh, an arm wrestling tournament. A friend of mine was holding the tournament, and I was up there, and he was pulling in the novice 154 class. And I thought he said he was, like, 16 at that time. So that would put him at, like, 30, 29 or 30 this year. All right, maybe. That's, that's what yeah. I think. I, mean, I don't I think, think he's, he's 30, wrong. though. I, I, I definitely don't think he's 30, no. so. Yeah, high 20s, maybe. <laughs> Excuse me. I think he's late 20s. Yeah. yeah. You know, one At of least the your hair is better than his, Jed. No, my hair is better than everybody's, so that's just a <laughs> given. That's, that's, probably why, that's probably why he won't come to a competition and man up. I mean, it's one thing to do these piddly, double-inch, thumbless farmer's feats. It's another thing altogether to actually show up to a contest. So, Say, Whose well, bells were those, anyway? Norm- those are his. Those are his. They're they're Slater bells, and um, I guess he wanted to get them painted like red and black. So, but he okay. took them to some someone, and then they 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 didn't have red or something like that. It was like a powder coat place, and um, they were so they did them yellow and blue for. I don't even know what reason. I guess those are the numbers that they had, and they were like, since I didn't have your colors, you get it for free. So. That's kind of the story, as I, as I recall. So, it. so he's actually got his own belt, and that's, that's pretty cool. So this yeah. is something he works on, man. Okay. All right. Well, nice. Yeah, he, wanted, nice. he wanted to get his own pair, like, basically the moment he was able to lift Luke's gold inch thumbless. He was like, That probably how happened do I... right away, right? Right, yes. He was like, how do I get my own pair? And then I told him, and then shortly after that, he went ahead and ordered so what's he keep screwing around with just the regular inches for then? Why hasn't he had a pair of like Millennium Belt whipped up? So the one day that he came to the gym last year, early last year, um, they, he and Luke worked on mathematical equations to figure out what they needed in order to build replicas. So it's 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 something that's working inside of his head. 
it just hasn't taken place yet. They they probably took half hour at the end of the workout to write down the different, uh, you know, the the different uh, formulas to figure out what kind of billets they would need in order to um, forge something out of uh, raw steel. Hmm. Not forge, but um, wow. machine lathe something out of raw steel for for something like that. Well. I remember uh, announcing an event at Mohegan Sun Casino. It was uh, the Connecticut Power Fit Expo. And um, Storm, at the arm wrestling part of the event, they had a a samurai sword that they gave away for first place. And I want to say Storm won, like, four of them. So here he was. And, like, security, the casino security said nothing to him. All right? And he, like, he was walking around with us pretty much the whole night with these samurai swords on them. It was, <laughs> it was a riot. And no one, like security didn't say anything. Here's a guy walking around with four samurai swords. <laughs> Move along, nothing to see here. No big deal. Right. You know, just, a, just a big right. muscular dude with samurai swords. No worries. No. <laughs> so, Jed, let me ask you something. Have you ever gotten Storm on an axle? Uh, not me, but I know he's worked the axle. They have, they have an axle down to Jim Brown's gym. I think it's called Brown's gym. It's in Clark Summit, Pennsylvania. And that's where the, the double, uh, thumbless inch farmer took place. <clears throat> okay. Um, yeah, I, was, I, I, was I don't know what he got. That. Yeah. I, he's, he's over 400 pounds. I'm sure. Well, yeah, that's what I was thinking. I was yeah. Thinking there's no way he wouldn't be. Yeah, but I just didn't know if anyone got an actual number on him. Because, yeah, and I uh, you know, there was just a video that came out. I think I, I believe Paul Lynn did like three ninety three on an axle, just like a week or yeah, two. Yeah, I believe that. Yeah, yeah. Paul and uh, well, you, you, I think you're going to see more videos from those guys. Paul and uh, and Storm both have an editor, a video editor. It's like a local oh. uh, a local dude who is doing well, the. Yeah the video editing for them. So they're, they're really pumping out a lot of YouTube videos, which by the way, I've been looking for someone to do that for me for, I don't know how many years. So if yeah. someone's listening and they want a job, then contact me about this. Um, because I'm interested in making that leap. So, but, um, yeah, they just, they yeah, just shoot Paul. a ton of footage and then this dude like clips it up for them. So which yeah, which is pretty I've cool. Seen, I've seen where Paul's got his own channel. He does mainly yeah. arm wrestling related stuff on. Yeah. But uh, but but yeah, that'll be cool. You know, I know mm-hmm. I saw they did were they did a video where they were doing some arm wrestling training like a few weeks ago, and I saw Storm was in it. So. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, those are two strong guys, two very strong guys. They're gonna have some really cool stuff come out just in general, arm strength wise, grip strength wise. Yeah. I look forward to that. No doubt, man. No doubt. So. Um, Shall we go on to anvil lifting? Yeah, sure. All right. Sure. So that's the main that's the main topic today, everybody. So, um, you know, generally when you think of anvil lifting, you're thinking about grabbing the anvil by the horn, kind of like what we were talking about earlier with the rogue horn uh, implement. But recently there have been a few videos where people have been lifting them by the face. So the images for this week's video – are a couple that I got off the internet, and they show what the <clears throat> actual parts of the anvil are called. You may not have you may not have known that there's actual terminology associated with the associated with the anvil. So you'll see the face is the top flat part of the anvil. And at the uh, pinch grip games, Eric Hussein had a challenge anvil that weighed around 174 pounds or so, and the face was about four and a half inches across. And it was in the medley, and the feat was you had to reach down and grab it with two hands in a pinch grip and then lift it to lockout. So nobody got it during the the medley. I was able to finally get it shortly afterwards, and that was the video that was shared by Devin Larratt. And uh, got, got some pretty cool comments and things, and probably a lot of people hadn't seen anvils lifted that way, or maybe they hadn't seen anvils at all, or at least anvils that big. And then shortly after that video came out, a couple other strong dudes, Jesse Pinonen and Tanner, Tanner Merkel, both posted videos lifting 
uh, Yesse, 178 pounds, and then Tanner, 181 pounds. And they're both in the 4-inch, four 4.5-inch four um, face width range. So um, what I thought we could talk about today is um, just anvil training in general. And then one thing before we go that I want to work up to before we're, we're done is this, uh, this feat that George Jowett supposedly did where he cleaned a roughly 172-pound anvil by the horn and then pressed it overhead. So we can save that towards, for, for, for later, towards the end. But, uh, <clears throat> Alan, what kind, of, uh, what kind of anvil training have you done in the past? You got an anvil over there? I don't have an anvil. Um, I've got I've got a couple of the uh, the iron mine little bighorns, and that is it. Uh, I I've, I've had my sights on anvils. I'd like to get one of my own. The problem is they're they're not terribly hard to come by, but they go for quite a lot of money. You know, yeah. if you're shopping on like eBay and things like that, some of these things are, you know three or four bucks a pound. Yeah. And to get a decent anvil, it's like it's like getting a hold of a, an inch dumbbell. You know, right. you get five or six hundred bucks wrapped up in this thing before before you even talk in shipping. Mm-hmm. You know, and um, and that's just I'm waiting for my day where I walk into the you know, the junkyard and I find one just sitting there, you know, that's screaming my name. <laughs> but I have a hard time ponying up, you know, 500 bucks for something that's it's literally just on the want the want yeah. list for me. You know? Right. So, yeah. well, well, I've been super lucky myself. I have a whole bunch of anvils, so I was gifted one from um, like a Harbor Freight or something like that by Dan Sonadoza like years and years ago, probably like 2008 or 2009, he gave this anvil to me. Um, I, I, my uncle used to have a business where he tore down barns and then um, people will buy the barn boards because it, they use them decoratively and they're really, really yeah. pretty because they're aged and stuff like that. So he used to tear down barns and sell those boards, and he found an anvil one time in one of those barns. And uh, when he passed away, I ended up with that anvil. Um, and I got a I got a one one twelve or one thirteen from Rick Walker when I bought his gym from him. Um, I was able to buy another like hundred two hundred three pounder from a guy recently. Um, I've got one on loan from one of the guys who used to train them in the gym. And uh, Luke just bought one that's a 200-pounder last last June, I believe. He bought that, and uh, it's it's really it's really a sight to behold. So I have a, a really nice collection of anvils um, over the last dude uh, over 10 years. What about you, James? I don't have any anvils, but I'm kind of in Alan's camp. I've been looking on Facebook Marketplace and on Craigslist for years for the right yeah. size one and for the right price, and it is, it's quite a task. You've definitely been a lot luckier with it than I have. Um, well, you know, I think, I, like, uh, you know, it's you can go to Harbor Freight today and probably buy one for like seventy bucks, but it's going to be real small. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that, like that, 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 that small one I have is you know a cheapo, but to find yeah. one that's a hundred, hundred fifty pounds, something like that for a good price is like almost impossible now these days because of that um, forged in fire show. It really made anvils like. It, it brought up the awareness of anvils and made them more popular, and I think it's just uh, caused like a bigger price hike on a lot of those. Uh, sure. Not to mention the fact that, from what I understand, anvils will will eventually go bad, but they they can hold their ping for a long, long time. So, someone that knows what they have is not going to let an anvil go for for no. For nothing. I yeah. mean, a lot of these they, anvils are like hundred years old. You yeah, know, these, they go bad from the beating they take. Right. That's when they. That's when they die, so to speak. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And and yeah. the ring is the test that determines if it still has the has the spring to it, if you will. Mm-hmm. Um, um, yeah, I like that. Yeah. Um, my actual training, though, um, just uh, for a while there, I was training with uh, David Horn's version. Mm-hmm. That that horn top, um, that's when I just started training grip at Bob's house. The only reason I did it was because I was able to pull decent numbers on that. And I think the first time I ever pulled on a little bighorn, I got up over 200 pounds. Mm-hmm. So it was just something that I was decent at. 
I just didn't continue to train it because it just, I don't know, it just, it didn't really, it didn't stimulate me, I guess, you know, but yeah. uh, I was, I was never able to lock out uh, um, Richard Soren's 176 pound anvil, but I was able to lift up that, get it off the ground to a pretty decent height. Um, I've definitely pulled over 150 ones. Uh, like I know Gil had one at uh, the Southern Squeeze one year. Um, I think uh, I've, I've done some training. I wonder, was it Nick Rosendahl? Does Nick have one? I think Nick has one. Well, I know There's Nick used one. to have a, a picture, an avatar picture, where he was holding an absolutely enormous anvil. Yeah. So I, I know he has the, the smaller, like the 55-pounder, and I know that he's had access to that other gigantic one, but I don't know if that one's his or not. Is that the one that you're yeah. talking about, that gigantic one? I, it, it might be. I don't know. I, I, mm. I, you know, I always look for one that's in the 170s range because, yeah. you know, just because that's the one that I've, I've, you know, messed around with at Sornex before and I've, you know, had a hard time locking it out. I, I'd like to get one so that I could work on it and, and eventually, you know, really lock it out. And, you know, I mean, it, it's just the horns on them are so wide. Yeah. So, so they're kind of hard for me to get a good grip on, but... But I do, I do enjoy anvil lifting. And then after I watched uh, you and, and then Tanner pinching those big anvils and, and everything, I, I started thinking about uh, getting one for that because, yeah. you know, if I could find one that's, you know, maybe three and a half to, 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 to four inches, uh, I, I might have a chance to pinch one that's in the 170s range. But I'm not – I don't think I'm, I'm pinching, you know, wh what was it that you and Tanner pulled? Was it – Almost a 200-pound anvil or something? Uh, I think mine was more like in the 174 area. Uh, okay. Tanner's was 181, and Yesse's was 178. Yeah. Well, I've been working on my wide pinch just because uh, I, I, I think I might have told you I got those two 45-kilogram plates. Did I tell you yeah. about those? Yeah. Yes. And uh, – they're, I mean, they're not, they're not very easy to pinch, obviously. I mean, I can't even pop them off the ground, and they're, they're pretty wide. But it, it is something I'd like to sort of train for and, mm. and maybe eventually pull off the ground with mm. two hands. So, so yeah. that would definitely help, I think, with anvil pinching as well. Yeah. Well, it's nice to yeah. – it, it'll be nice when you find one in that 175 range because you'll be able to figure out exactly how to put your hand on that by the horn yeah. because yeah. Um, we found that the way that we can lift the 200 pounder the best is definitely not, it, it's counterintuitive as far as the way that, that you put your grip on there. Um, you, like it, you don't grab it like you would grab like an anvil horn trainer. You have to like, it's almost like you put your hand under it and and you squeeze, but you you don't. It's it's like you have to support it in your hand. You know, you almost have to yeah, cradle it in a way. Yeah. Yeah. So <clears throat> and, almost leaning towards you. Yeah, and and you yeah. have to be careful because at least in my case, and I guess it's happened to Luke too. I don't think anybody else has really tried to pick it up. But, like, sometimes we get cranking on that thing with our wrist, and we get, like, that pinching, that, uh, that nerve pain in, in, our, yeah. in our wrists. And, and then it kind of takes a few minutes for that to go away. So and you try to avoid that. From curling it in. What's that? From, from curling it in? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, like like from, you're, you're from bending your wrist. Like a... Yeah, from having it, like, yeah. cocked under, uh, under tension. Yeah. 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 Very, very I'm uncomfortable to get, like, feeling. Uh, I get like a ganglion cyst kind of deal that forms inside of my wrist whenever I do anything like bent with my hand wide open, mm -hmm. you know, and like a, like if I were to try to, you know, curl a blob or something, if you will, and I, and I try to, you know, flex my wrist, I'll, I'll get something that forms right inside of there. And it, mm -hmm. it's literally like a cyst that swells up. It hurts like a bitch for like a couple of weeks. Those are painful, can, man. Yeah. Those, are, like, those are really painful. On it and make it pop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of, I don't know, it sucks. I've had to uh, pop one on Luke's wrist for like like two or three times. Yeah, yeah. So, it, they're, and it, they're it's not there all the time. It just it just comes back all of a sudden. I don't, actually, since he time. started arm wrestling a lot, I don't think it's, I don't think it's happened since then. But um, earlier on when, when he was just doing grip, I, I remember doing it a couple times. 
Hmm. Yeah. But, yeah, you know, there's another place that I remember doing some anvil lifting. That was at Dennis Rogers. He's, oh. he's got a, a, a great anvil to, to play around with. You know but what, dude? Uh, if, if you guys are looking for anvils, I – I, obviously, it's good to look on eBay and Facebook Marketplace and stuff like that. But sometimes, I'm telling you, man, you can find some amazing stuff at uh, at yard sales and shit. Like, like I'll just pop into yard sales sometimes and just just start asking for stuff. And and you don't people don't realize what they have. You you can find stuff that they're like, well, I would sell you this thing, but I can't move it out of the backyard, you know. Oh, so yeah, <clears throat> you know. Just sitting there, like weeds growing around <laughs> yeah. it, and spiders living on living underneath so, it. Jed, so you have one of those moments where you say to him something like, "Oh, well, why don't you give me fifty bucks and I'll get rid of that for you?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, the King of Pinch uh, moving service. That's exactly right. <laughs> that's, that's funny. <laughs> Coming to a yard sale near you. Yep. 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 <laughs> you got any blobs while you're at it? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And then also uh, scrap yards. You can look at scrap yards. I mean, most scrap yards aren't dumb. They know that it's it's a heavy it's a heavy item and they're gonna they're gonna charge you some money, but you might be able to find stuff there. So there's there's a there's a scrap yard in Tawanda that has like a dude, I can't remember, maybe a hundred and eighty pound anvil and they want a lot of money for it, so it's not gonna be cheap there, but um, I, I've always looked around for that kind of stuff at the at the scrapyards when I've when I've gone and visited. So you know, Eric Rusin had that post on the grip board years ago where he was looking to unload a couple of his anvils. I think he had a couple of older Peter Wrights, mm. and they were just they were just taking up space for him. But his his price it was it was ridiculously low, really. Oh, um, it was. I mean, it was a scream of deal. I think the problem was you had to. You had to meet him at nationals or something. There was nothing ridiculous about the thing at all. It just for me, it would have been driving halfway across the U.S. to get something like that, you know. Mm-hmm. And yeah. um, I simply didn't have the time to pull it off. But yeah, he was getting rid of two at once. I, I mean, I don't even think he was asking. I don't think he was asking a couple hundred dollars a piece for him, mm-hmm. which was really a steal for what those things weighed. Right. You know? I mean, it's it's a little more than a you know a, a buck a pound, buck fifty a pound maybe. That's right. That, that's that's a great deal for something like that. Sure, no doubt. And, yeah, I think that's a good part, a good topic as well. Is 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 how much, you know, you should you should spend for for anvils, because you know sometimes I'll look at one and be like, oh, that's exactly what I'm looking for, and it's like eight hundred bucks, mm-hmm. and I'm like, you know what, that's not well, exactly what I'm looking for. <laughs> that's that's the problem is if if you're a, if you're an aspiring you know blacksmith, somebody to look to do that type of work as a hobby, or an antique collector, they're worth all that money and and more to somebody like that. Whereas people like us, we're literally just looking to pick them up and they're going to be a rusty mess in the garage and, you know, just mess around with them once in a while. It doesn't have that same value. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Right. And that's true. So, so, yeah, so that's kind of the problem you run into is our market's so much different that we're literally looking for the junkyard score. And, yeah. um, and there's, a, there's a legitimate, you know, market for these people to sell them for what they're selling them for, you know, five, mm-hmm. 600 bucks for just a, you know, 120-pound anvil, something like that. Right, it's yeah, true. That's, it's that's a good point. But, yeah. Right. Oh, my dad has a nice. Um, it's an older hay button. I think it weighs. I think it's maybe like 140 pounds. But that's a collector piece for him. He bought that when I was a kid. I remember seeing him go to the antique store and picked it up. He got it for a screaming deal at the time. And I remember he even asked the person for a hammer so he could ring the bell to you know ring the anvil to make sure that it was that it was still good. Hmm. and um, he's actually used it through the years, and now it's just kind of, like I said, it's a showpiece for him. He keeps it all, you know, oiled up, and it's real glossy look. It looks real nice, and uh, one oh, day I'll get cool. my hands on that thing officially, but um, it's, a, it's a really nice bell. The, the edges are crisp. It's the, it's a pristine condition, you know. It's um, the, the, the anvil collectors would be in horror if they saw us chalking these things up and dropping them on the ground and putting chains <laughs> on them and stuff. Yeah, but, uh, you know, that's, that's definitely the big difference. I was wondering yeah. if you unofficially got your hands on it before. Yeah. No, no. I remember when I was a kid, I actually, um, I, I picked it up, but not in the conventional sense. When we were kids, it was cool enough to pick it up, but like in a bear hug fashion, you know, envisioning a 12 yeah. year old kid trying to muscle that, that was how we did it. We wouldn't have known at the time that picking it up by the horn was cool or trying to pinch it. We wouldn't have been right. able to do it anyway. But, um, yeah. yeah, that was just, we showed off to each other, like we could lift it this way and the other guy couldn't kind of thing. But yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, we didn't even know what we had. So, 
So you got under it kind of like a zercher kind of thing and lifted it up. There. That, that was literally the case. I remember I remember doing that very yeah. thing because it was um it was on a large block, so it was a couple feet off the ground, you know, so that way you could position a piece of metal and whack on it with a hammer, you know. Mm-hmm. So it was yeah. up in the air a little bit. So we're picking it from an elevated thing. But uh, there you go. Yeah. Yep, that's my that's my fond story of it. My dad has a nice picture of it on his Facebook page. It's a it's a really pretty anvil. Like I said, it's definitely not the he, he would be horrified that, that the sight of somebody chalking it up and farmers walking it through their yard, dumping it in the dirt. You know, that would be uh, <laughs> um, um, well, there you that's a good thing. way to get back at your dad. Yeah. yeah yep. <laughs> Start well, you bring trend, up trend, Alan. Come on. You bring yeah, up a good the, point, the, though. The anvil goblet squat. Yeah. You bring up a good point, though, just, Alan. Maybe maybe the place we need to start looking for these is at antique shops. Yeah, I mean yeah. you'll see them. You'll see them. You know, I just think I think they're going to be really expensive, especially with the way of a a lot of antique shops work. Is they're like you know miniature flea markets. You know, a lot of people are just dealers. They kind of have their own things inside of there, so it's not like it's owned by the antique store. They're just the they're just the storefront. You know, and there's individual vendors, even though they're not on site. That's kind of how that works. Right. So yeah. so many of those people will know exactly what they've got, you know. But it would be another way of of getting to it. But yeah, you're gonna you're gonna pony up some cash, yeah. I think, unless it's some old farmer that doesn't care, or you know so, something along those lines. Otherwise, anybody that knows what they've got, they're gonna they'll just sit on it and 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 sell it to the highest bidder at some point. They're just worth that much. Good. Yeah. One what day. What about you, Jed? What about me? What about you? Uh, uh, anvil goblet squats. Oh, anvil goblet squats. Um, Start the train. I've never, I've never, I've never tried it, but it sounds like a a good, a good challenge. The thing is, I think you're gonna, it's gonna end up being like out away from your body a little bit, and that would be, that's gonna hard. end up being really hard, man. Especially, yeah. especially at the bottom, that's gonna really want to pull you forward. So. Well, that'd, yeah. be, that'd be a new neat thing. It's kind of like what uh, James Beyond Dangerous Rodriguez did the other day with the, uh, the inch dumbbell <laughs> tricep extension. Did you catch Dude, that? Dude, what the hell were you doing, man? That was scary. <laughs> that was yeah. scary to watch, bro, and I've done a lot of dumb shit in my life. That was yeah. scary. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I just like the nickname. <laughs> I like, to, I like to get the adrenaline pumping a little bit once in a while. You know, it's this, nothing does that like a little bit of danger. If you didn't see this, this dude's doing freaking a two-arm French press with, was it the inch dumbbell, James? It was, was that one inch, it was, Yeah, it was, it was my inch that I got from uh, from uh, Jacob Selene. And then what did you have going? It looked like there was a chain wrapped around it. What, where was the other yeah. end? Was that like around your ankle or something or around your throat? No. What the? So, <laughs> if so that falls out of your hand, you die. I had it attached to the machine itself. With the cable the machine? Yeah, yeah. Dude. Yeah, so that if it fell, like at least it'd give me enough time to get the hell out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, delay gravity a bit. Well, you know what I've been doing? I, I've been doing like tricep extensions. Uh, for, uh, I mean, a long time like that, like French press style ones with, um, with loading pins. Like I have a, a rig that attaches to, to a loading pin at the bottom and I'm able to do like, you know, sets of three to four with 175 pounds. So I'm like, you know, maybe it's time to try with the inch and yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's different. It's just different. It's harder. It's not a flat surface you're pushing off of because it's like the globe shape shape of the inch. You don't get nearly as good leverage with your hands to press it. You know what I mean? Because it's not like you're pushing off the handle or something. You're pushing off the actual globe. And the way that your hands position it, it's it's so rounded and weird. It just puts more pressure on your elbows. I don't understand. I hope you can shoot another video for us sometime. You know, that goes maybe maybe commentate it, commentate it as yeah, well. I could do that. I could do that. I'll 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 have to do that. I was explaining to to Jason about how I got it in position and stuff. 
And he was just like, you're out of your mind. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man dies in, in dumbbell incidents in his garage. You know? How about it? Yeah, he turns into a snuff film and you're just trying to post a training video. <laughs> yeah, I'll just do it on Facebook Live. You know? <laughs> For 45 minutes, I'll be laying there dead until somebody finally comes over. Everyone's watching it on, watching me bleed on Facebook. So. Yeah, the jet will be the one posting, hey, can I have that anvil since you, or that uh, instance you don't need it anymore? <laughs> yeah, well, well, you know where I got the idea? Yeah. I was, um, what is the name of the dumbbell that... Uh, Nick Rosendahl has. It's the Gracie Bell, right? Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah. what, 148 pounds or something? Well, I was mm-hmm. able to take that from the ground and put it in position and do a couple of uh, uh, reps that way. And I was like, well, maybe I could do that with the, the inch. And I was having so much trouble getting it into position, you know, actually cleaning it into position, especially since, you know, post-shoulder surgery. So I was like, I've got to come up with some kind of rig to do it. So I did. Wow. Don't ever do that shit again, man. That's that's too uh, that's too crazy. So that was that's yeah. like the flexibility thing for me. Seeing a guy actually get his shoulders over or his you know hands over head like that and do it's impressive. <laughs> My yeah, days of just, I, I wouldn't be doing that with the twenty pounds right now. So. Uh, it's just so much. It's so much pressure on the elbow. That's the thing. It's just so. It's just a weird thing. Right. You know, it's hard to explain. It's just, yeah, it's not something I really want to do. So I think it would be cool if I was able to crank out a few, like, really good fluid reps with it. But I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm, not that, I'm not that interested in it. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so anyway. there's one, one more thing that I wanted to talk about, because, and this came up on uh, – this actually came up on Facebook last week. So I, I got in a few fights last week. It was a good week. It was a banner week for uh, <laughs> King of Pinch. So uh, the the Jowett Anvil uh, or George Jowett is a is a you know he was a professional performing strongman I guess the old time strongman I think he wrote some books maybe right I'm not up on the on the history are you guys are you guys up on this guy anybody have like a yeah, uh, biography yeah I know you could... about George Jowett probably okay. not too much but I do know about him and yeah all right so. You know, they they have the Jawa Anvil, and at the first couple Mighty Mitts, there was a Jawa Anvil carry where you had to try to pick this thing up and walk with it. So it was it was definitely in the first one that I was involved in. And uh, but the story is here. Here's where the here's where the interesting part is. The story is this gent grabbed this 174 pound anvil by the horn, picked it up and cleaned it and then apparently pressed it over his head. Now, that's 174 pounds in one hand. Um, and wait a second. He picked it up by the horn, which means he was holding it over his head like the Statue of Liberty. Well, the, the pictorial that is present online, if, if you search George Jowett, I'm right? I'm looking at a picture of it right now. Th- what did you search, Alan, to, to, to bring it up? Um, I searched. I just searched uh, Jowett Anvil, and it actually linked me to something on the bl- uh, the grip board from two thousand two. Okay, that's what I think I'm looking. Let me just double check here. Yeah, it's it's on the grip board from yeah March twenty fifth two thousand two. It was guest Jeff Roark that posted it. And there's Jeff Roark is uh, Joe Roark's brother, I believe. Yeah, he and this this guy. Yeah, and Roark had had chimed in too a little bit here and there yeah. and um but there's a there's a picture posted right away and apparently he's a, he's got a fan out there that i don't know it's like a this is like a joe kinney thing sort of in my opinion in the in the number four gripper oh yeah but uh, okay. well, yeah yeah so but, know, no, no. so james if, you have, if anybody searches real just real quick if you search george jawa anvil or just jawa anvil j-o-w-e-t-t and look at it yeah yeah, you're going to see the very – and then click images in Google. You're going to see where this man is picking up a, a, an anvil, which to me, it looks like this might be a 100-pound anvil in this picture. Yeah, he looks like yeah, a car salesman. Is that the one you're looking at? Yeah. He's got like a tie on and like, yeah. <laughs> like dress shoes and shit? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> now, 
<laughs> so we're to believe that he cleaves this thing to his shoulder. He cleaves it to his shoulder in midair, really. Rotates 180 it. degrees like and counterclockwise so we can see him from the other <laughs> position. And then he's got it like in a pinch grip thing on his shoulder. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm looking at that. <laughs> yes, dude. This, this looks like Photoshop to Helen back. This, His this hair didn't the even problem. change. There's like no sweat. <laughs> Dude, this is the problem, man. And and you have you have so you have George Jowett who who I believe wrote um How to Mold a Mighty Grip or something like that, right? So he's an author, right? So that that gives you some credibility if you've if you've written a piece. You know, so then <laughs> obviously whatever feats he claims to have done or people back him on doing, he must have done it, it to me. Unless this man is six foot, 10 inches tall, that's not a 174 yeah. pound anvil. Yeah, that's, that's what I was thinking, too. He would have to be like a very lean six foot, 10, seven foot, weigh about 400 pounds. You know what I mean? For mm-hmm. that to be a 170-something pound anvil. Because right. that looks like, at most, a 100-pound anvil. Yes. And mm-hmm. even still, if he's able to actually clean that off the ground and then flip it into position mm-hmm. and hold it with one hand and then press it overhead, that's amazing. Yes. Like, if he's actually able to do that with a 100-pound anvil. Yes. Let alone a 170-pound anvil, which I'm sorry, but No. No. no, this this Look. is another dude that can clearly squat 440 for 50. I can tell it this guy. <laughs> <laughs> right. What the heck, man? What is wrong with you, Alan? <laughs> bring, up, bring up old shit. If anybody doesn't know what he's talking about, Joe Kinney put out a video stating that he would do like 440 pounds for 50, 60 reps every single day in order to pump his body full of testosterone. Uh, weighing about 122 pounds body weight. <laughs> yeah. You'd have 90 pounds of ass on you if you could do that. My God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so what we're saying here is that, well, well, first I'd like to know, how does he get the, the anvil into position? Obviously, he's pulling it, like he's lifting it off the, 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 the ground from the, the horn. Yeah, right. and then swinging it out away from his body, if you notice in the first pick, it is not even close to his body. It's swinging it out. So he's using like a swing in order to arc the, 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 the anvil up into position, which I suppose is a decent way to do it because it's, gonna, it's, gonna, it's not going to rotate as quickly when it comes into the catch position as it would if you were pulling it in a straight line and then making it turn over. But yeah. at the same time, dude, when you're swinging something like that out away from you, it has a tendency to rip right out of your grip strength. It is, sure. It's a totally different dynamic. And I'm talking with people trying to explain this stuff, and they're, like, they're acting like I have no clue what I'm talking about. Like I guarantee so who- I've touched more anvils. Than, than any of these guys have. How, and, how is it even an argument looking at the pictures? It, 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 there's, there's nothing about it that even looks legitimate. Because this old-time strongman stuff is like, it's like a, a faith system. It, it's like, uh, it's yeah. like you can't tell people that what they're believing is, is crazy. They, they won't mm-hmm. listen to you. And you've got right. the John Woods and the... Um, <clears throat> Uh, oh, shoot, I, the other guy's name is escaping me that like sell these materials full time in their business and they just keep on creating an even firmer and firmer and deeper foundation for for these lifts. I mean, if dude, we're talking about a feat of strength that I don't think Brian Shaw would be able to pull off. I don't mm-hmm. think Storm Cellino would be able to pull these things so off. This, and is, we, this is like catching about- a... No, Brian Shaw would not be able to take a 174-pound anvil by the horn, pull it out in front of him, flip it somehow into his hand where he's pinching it with one hand as it comes up above his shoulder into a clean position, and then press it. Right. It's I bullshit. Mean, he would what be this able is, to do the press. He would this guy did this with a 50-pound anvil is what happened, and this is a story where you, you know how you like catch a 10-pound bass, and then every time you tell the story, it gets two pounds heavier? 
Yeah. That's what happened yeah. with his anvil. That, that is that, exactly know, just, what happened with this anvil. That yeah, that yeah. is exactly what happened. That, and over time, over time, okay, so I just found the post. Um, it goes way back to January 29th in the Etched in Stone Facebook group, okay? So you've got to go way back to January 29th in the Etched in Stone Facebook group, and this is the, this is the discussion. You'll see this, the very same picture um, <coughs> that, uh, that we're talking about here, and the discussion, it, it, gets, it gets crazy. So this guy, Mark Patterson, says not only did he clean it, he also pressed it, comma, legend, arm flex emoji. Immediately I got on there, I said, I call bullshit on this feet. Um, <laughs> so um, this other Mark Pearson goes, if it's pounds, I'd say it would have been possible. I said, so this guy in his office attire picked up a giant anvil by the horn, swung it out away from his body, allowed it to invert in the air, and caught the giant anvil by the face, which is most likely three to four inches wide. And then, not only did he catch this giant unwieldy anvil, which has now essentially, which is now essentially in a bottoms-up kettlebell position, and pressed it, nearly 170 pounds, overhead, balancing it in a pinch grip, because that's what's pictured above. So then this Bill is- Hinburn comes in and he mentions some stuff backing Zhao its strength, but doesn't actually back the feet itself. Yeah. Um, uh, and and no, that is a problem. See, this thing. is a problem that's, here. There's the divide. There's the this, divide. This is a gigantic no problem that here. George Zhao it wasn't strong. No right. one is saying that. He right. might have been unbelievably strong. He might have been stronger than anyone in this conversation. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> in many ways. Right. And you know what? I'm sure he was. But just think about it in these terms, okay? How many people have cleaned and pressed the Thomas Inch bell? Six, seven. Nope. No. Okay. So now you're talking about something that's a little bit lighter <clears throat> in the Inch bell, and you're talking about cleaning something where there is a bell at the back of your hand. There's a big round globe at the back of your hand. Yeah. preventing it not only from slipping out of your hand, but keeping it in balance. Now, you're trying to tell me that someone took more weight than that in a completely imbalanced way where all of the weight would have to be at the front of him. I mean, just, you know, think about the amount of radial deviation strength this person must have had mm-hmm. to do this with a 174-pound uh, 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 anvil. Okay, swing it into position with one hand, pinch it, like you said, because it's going to be coming back like a maniac at that point, right? Like if you were able to swing it into position, how much force would that be creating coming back towards your body? Yeah. Okay. Now you're pinching it, balancing it with one hand, and then pressing it. Now, now here's the thing. I would venture to guess that there are people in this world, even if there's maybe even a dozen of them, that could take that bell with one, I mean, that, that, that anvil with one hand, okay, balance it effectively, and, and, and press it overhead, okay? And there's obviously even more than that that would be able to take that type of anvil off the ground, even though some very strong people with very strong grips would tell you that that's a major feat of grip strength to lift a, 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 an anvil that big. No one who has ever walked the planet, is going to take that anvil, swing it, clean it into position with a swing like that in front of them, then balance it, and then press it. Nobody. Nobody. And that's the end of the conversation. It doesn't mean that George Jowett wasn't strong, you know, but no one is doing that, not with a 174-pound anvil. Like you said, even with a 100-pound anvil, that's amazing. I mean, anyone yep. that's tried to pinch and clean something, for example, would tell you that it's a, not an easy thing to do. Hell, do it with, like, you know, four or five kilogram plates, you know? Try to clean it and get it in a position and then press it. I'm not, you know, there's a lot of guys listening to this that could do that, you know, but it's not easy. Mm-mm. Now, we're talking about something that's just as wide, only it weighs 
174 pounds. It's just, I don't know, it's like, it's, it's ridiculous. And I get that it gives people horrible cognitive dissonance if you go against their core beliefs. I get that. You know, but it's like, if, it's crazy. If, if you were going to take something, though, think about anything that you'd pick up and just go to set it on your shoulder. If it was a baseball bat or, a, you know, a duffel bag, you wouldn't grab it that way. You'd grab it in an underhand position to sling it over your shoulder. You wouldn't grab it overhand. It doesn't even, it doesn't even you know, anatomically look like a thing you would do to, to place it like that. Yeah. Everything about the picture that I'm looking at, it just doesn't, it just doesn't add up. Even, even the act of getting it to his shoulder doesn't fit the way he's holding it. Well, wait, wait, let me read this because there's going to be more stuff that doesn't add up. You ready, Alan? <laughs> yeah. So this is coming from Bill Hinburn, who is the other guy I was trying to think of earlier who sells a lot of these materials from the old-time strongmen because they lost their copyright. So these guys swept in and started selling somebody else's shit, okay? So oh, that's I know what that is. What's okay. that? Yes. That's, no, yes. no, I just – I had a bit of an interaction with Bill Hinburn, so that's, that's what – okay. Yep. Just go ahead. It's for another time. Okay. Now, take that away. Bill Hinburn probably knows more about these old-time strongmen as far yes. as, like, what's Agreed. been reported than anybody else, okay? Agreed. I know a little bit about Jowett's life and background. The above lift was, has always been controversial, just like Thomas Inch and his challenge 172-pound dumbbell, which we can talk about that some other time. It was rumored that the anvil that Jowett used, as above, was actually made of paper – Mache. Paper fucking mache. Okay? However, to be objective, Jowett was in fact very strong. Just like you just said, James. That's just what you talked yeah. about a couple minutes ago. Over the years, I have talked to eyewitnesses that saw him clean and press a 110 pound dumbbell in a suit and tie in his 60s, which, in my opinion, does not compare at all to the feat that we're talking about with 170 four pound anvil there is no comparison no, between a clean and press with a 110 pound dumbbell and the feet we're talking about and no. here alan check this out he was not very tall maybe five foot six so a five foot six dude is lifting that's supposed to be a 174 pound anvil knowing what we yeah. know about anvils if you go back to the footage from 2000 uh, 10 when I, or I believe it was 2010 when I was in Mighty Mets and you tell me that those guys that are six foot six you know what I mean those guys are six foot six this dude was five foot six and look at the the proportional differences in those anvils just just ridiculous that's you know that's that is the one okay so I'm five foot nine okay and the 174 176 pound anvil that I was picking up it, it went up to my pecker okay. So what are you trying to tell me? You're trying to tell me that the anvil in that picture weighs 100. You got to be. Oh, God, people, please stop drinking the Kool Aid. Yeah. Please. Very stocky with wide hands, thick fingers, and enormous forearms. Before he became famous with his very successful physical culture mail order business, he worked as a chain maker, a blacksmith, butcher, etc. But Jowett was a master at self-promotion and had a tendency to, let's say, embellish his achievements. He yes. got both Bob Hoffman of York Barbell Company and Joe Weider off to a good start. So then Mark Pearson tags me, so I see that. I go, the clothes mean nothing in these lifts, and a 110-pound dumbbell clean is nothing compared to the feet that is touted with his anvil. And frankly, I don't know how anyone sleeps at night spreading these fables. Come on, guys. Listen to reason and stop with the old-time strongman myths. Um, yeah. Bill, uh, yeah. uh, Mark Patterson says, paper mache, question mark, question mark, question mark, LOL. Literally don't know what to say to this nonsense, but, yeah, I suppose weak folks always look for an angle or fable to discredit the folks who are much stronger than them. So this dude is actually laughing that Bill Hinburn would say that, even though Bill Hinburn probably, probably you know, heard about that from reputable sources, that it was made out of paper yeah. mache for that fucking picture. This guy says, no, it can't be true. That's a real anvil. And then this Mark guy goes, Jed Johnson, weak or bum hurt? Which one are you? I go, I'm the guy saying there's no way in hell that Jowett did the feet pictured and described above with a 170-pound anvil. Who the heck are you? He goes, just because you can't do it doesn't mean it hasn't been done. What a dumb shit attitude. 
who I am has got absolutely nothing to do with you. Who the heck are you? And I said, I'm the king of pinch. That's all you need to know. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. A, I'm the king of pinch. B, I'm the, king I'm of the pinch. person who goes out and seeks the strongest people and wants to compete with them and understand them. You know what I mean? And, and see exactly what it is that they can do and push myself to those levels. Jesus Christ. Yeah, dude. So it, 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 it gradually unravels from there. It just it, it actually becomes quite funny. Like Circo Peterman comes in, Timo Yanni comes in, and uh, it, it, was, it was really cool. And then I ended up – I stopped getting um, notifications about that, so I lost track of it. But uh, um, it's, it's pretty amazing. Um, you know – yeah, go even ahead. though all of this is such a load of crap, it's 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 good in a way that we had this sort of fraudulence because we wouldn't we wouldn't have it if people hadn't made up all this shit, right? Yeah, that's I mean, you know, really think about it. You know, we wouldn't be trying to lift things like the inch dumbbell or the Jawad anvil or any of the stuff if somebody hadn't come along and just made this crap up. Unfortunately, so. that's true, and that's that's what James Fuller said when he and I had a little spat last year because I was saying that Thomas Inch was a fraud. And he was saying something about like, well, because Thomas Inch is a fraud, and you know now now everybody wants an inch dumbbell because of the lore behind the inch dumbbell. You know, whereas if someone would have gone up and said, hey, what are you doing with that spike on your wrist, and what's that hole in the inch dumbbell there? You know, that might have like really shut a lot of shit down. Maybe would have, you know. Um, put him into a tailspin and never would have heard of him again. And, you know, a lot of, a lot of stuff wouldn't be the same now. So it, it is a good point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and look, I know, like, look, I, I know a lot of the old time strong men. I mean, you know, I don't, well, I don't want to mention any names, but, but we'll just talk about it. We'll just say this. Okay. That a lot of them were about self promoting because that was how they made their money. You know, so they had to create a little bit of lore because a lot of what they were doing had such great visual impact. Mm-hmm. You know, some of the stuff, they knew they had to make it look as impossible as, as they could. So, you know, the way to do that was to embellish or, you know, to have little sleight of hand tricks, I guess. You right. know, and I get that because, you know, they, they, were, they were just as much showmen as they were strongmen. And, and I understand that. Like, I get that. It's just, you know, it, it's just like when I was telling one of my clients that I'm training to lift the, the Thomas Inch dumbbell, and, you know, he's a real smart kid, and he was, he was reading about it, and he's like, oh, he says, that, that handle must be really hard to hold on to. And I told him, I said, well, yeah. I said, I don't know how many guys have lifted it with sub seven and a half inch hands. And then he and I matched up hands, and he goes, you do have small hands, you know? And I said, but I, I want to <laughs> rub it in. I, I, I said, I want to lift it, and, and I, he said, well, yeah. He says, but can you do what Thomas Inch did with it? And I said, well, what do you mean? I said, Thomas Inch couldn't even lift it. And he right. was kind of – and then I kind well, of told I'm, the story. I'm dying yeah. to have this conversation one day, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I kind of told him the story about the spike and, the, you know, the fact that he had different size bells. But I also explained to him that, you know, Thomas Inch was a showman, you know. So it's like – he was putting on a show. That's part of what he was doing. You know, I just, I think, I think it would have been better to, at some point in his life, have been honest about it, you know, and, and, you know, not died with his secrets, so to speak, kind of put yeah. things on the level, but I get it. I get that's, you know, a lot of people, that's what it is. They want to be known and remembered. Yeah. So that's what they do. Mm-hmm. But yeah. And we know and remember George Jowett. But that motherfucker didn't lift no anvil like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That anvil in that picture, if, dude, if homie is five foot six, that anvil in that picture is like 82 pounds. Yep. If it's, it's true, man. You. <laughs> I'm the king of pain. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> that should be on a shirt or a bumper sticker or something. That is just hilarious. You know who was you know who was showing off the forearms this week? Jed Johnson. Jed was rolling his sleeves up 
He rolled those sleeves up and he got in there. Oh, dude, I'm telling you, I had like four or five online online arguments going uh, throughout the week this week. Yeah, like my my toilet time was being taken up by like by verbal verbal brutality. It's it's for sure. Jeez. <laughs> well, that and some some chalk producing companies probably went out of business after you posted that one video, Jed. Oh yeah. With chalk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sales Fine. plummeted. Yep. Yep. It's uh, the, the stock on chalk is dropping faster than WWE's value. So, yeah. yep. <laughs> Not Which good. that joke probably meant nothing to nobody, but like basically Vince McMahon has lost like $300 billion in the last two weeks due to the, the valuation of WWE's stock dropping so significantly. So, Oh, wow. Huh. That's a bummer. Yeah. Yeah, so if nobody, it, in, in case anybody hasn't seen the video, I, I put up a video as King of Pinch saying that I was done using chalk because I finally got 80 pounds on the finish ball because I, I, I took a couple attempts where I didn't reapply chalk. So I was like, I'm done using chalk. Bye. Yeah, I saw that. That was hilarious. <laughs> we'll see if you use the same philosophy on the flask. <laughs> or when I when I go yeah. to clean the Jawa anvil. There you go. Yeah. <clears throat> well, it doesn't look like he's got any chalk in that picture. You know. I mean, well, they didn't have the chalk back then. Still on his hand. Yeah. They they didn't they didn't have chalk back then back then. That's what that's what the uh, <clears throat> old time strongman backers will tell you. They uh, yeah. They they didn't, didn't use it. So why it. should I use it? So. He didn't yeah, even yeah. flip his tie over his shoulder before he took the slot at that thing, you know? Dude, yeah, you got to tuck that tie in, bro. You got to tuck that tie in. Come on. Well, let's go. He looks like he's dressed in his Sunday best. You know, he's got his church clothes on. He doesn't want to get chalk on that, too. So Yeah. yeah. He did this on a Sunday. He did this on a Sunday. <laughs> That's right. He got out of church and was laying in the parking lot. Yeah. Somebody brought a 174-pound uh, anvil, obviously made out of lead, if it's that small, and uh, or some dense metal that we don't know about, and uh, and you know just cleaned it and pressed it in the Sunday best. You know what else so I noticed for the, a cooler story. You know what else I noticed? The background behind him kind of looks like the moon background in the the Apollo missions. There you go. Yeah. That's what he did. He did the it on the moon. Landing. Yeah, that's yeah. that's how he did it, bro. That's how he did it. He's got a wait in the oh in the second picture he's got a Freemason ring on. Oh, okay, all right, all right. Yeah, he did it. He did it, guys. Okay. Never mind. Yeah, never mind. Never mind that last part of the show. That last forty-five minutes of the show. Never mind. We got it. <laughs> All right. Well, that's everything I got, guys. I don't know if you have anything else on anvils, but I've 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 covered everything I wanted to. You guys bled me dry. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm good. <laughs> All right. No, I'm good too. Unless unless somebody out there wants to sell me an anvil for a really cheap price, somewhere between 170 and 180 pounds. You know, something I'm, I can practice yeah. cleaning and pressing. I'm sure Someone they're going to be coming out of the woodwork, James. Show. They're going to be coming out of the woodwork just like everybody that wants to edit videos for me as a service. So. <laughs> well, there you go. You should get in touch with Storms people. Yeah. That's what you should do. Might have to. All right, Alan, we've done it all. The show's yours, brother. Take it away. All right. Well, that is it for the latest episode of This Week in Good. I forgot the number, actually. But thanks for listening, everybody. Hope you like it. Uh, comment, subscribe. Uh, we'll see you next week with another one.